Hello there and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I've got yet another system that I bought off of eBay as broken. This computer should have an Intel Core i5-6500, 4GB of RAM, and no drive in it. It was described as not responding to power, and this time I think that I might believe the seller because this system has clearly been through something before. This is the kind of damage where it's somewhat shocking because you can't figure out how it happened. Yeah, sure, the system would be in far worse shape if it was run over by a car, but when a system is run over by a car, it's pretty easy to tell that it's been run over by a car. The lack of any serious damage elsewhere on the system and the very strangely warped back panel is an odd condition for a system to be in, to put it lightly. In any case, this system shouldn't power on. I chose to try and recreate the issue here, though if you find yourself in possession of a system with a banged up and bent power supply, you might want to avoid trying to plug it in. I looked the power supply over quite closely off camera and deemed the system safe to attempt to power up. More precautions were taken out of frame, which I won't go into detail on, but know that I'm only attempting this because I believe it to be safe. With the system plugged in, I flipped the switch on my surge protector and watched the system spin to life. Then it booted into Windows. Windows 11. Well, there clearly is a drive in the system, and it also clearly doesn't not respond to power. How lovely. Third system in a row that I've tried to buy is broken to fix that isn't broken. Oh well. Even though there might not be too much of a diagnosis and repair of the computer's actual functionality, I'm absolutely going to see what I can do about this bent up case and power supply. After shutting down the system, I noticed that the power supply had an annoying amount of coil whine when the system wasn't drawing any power loud enough to be very audible across the room, which isn't helping this unit's case with that bent up back cover. Moving on, I'm going to start by removing all of the components of the system so I can hopefully take a hammer to this case and make it slightly nicer than it is now. Once I'd removed the drive tray assembly, I saw that the system had a 256GB Lighton SSD. I'm assuming this is the original drive that came with this system, as I know a lot of Dell's OEM power supplies are Lighton units, and generally you never see consumers buying and building systems with Lighton SSDs. Additionally, there were three sticks of RAM in this system, two matching 4GB 2133MHz sticks and one 8GB 2660MHz stick. Definitely not 4 gigs of RAM, but you're not going to catch me complaining about this. I proceeded with tearing down the system entirely until all I was left with was this shell of a computer with no parts left in it whatsoever. I could start working out the dents in this part of the system, but I think that instead I'll chuck that case onto the floor for now and bring out the really interesting part, this power supply. Look at how warped the back of that unit is, while the rest of the unit is seemingly perfect intact and not bent in any way. I'm going to try and open this unit up, bang some of the dents out, and see if it looks a little bit better. While I'm at it, I'll inspect the PCB to make sure that there isn't any obvious damage that's been done to it by whatever messed up the back of the unit in this way. Now, because I'm opening up a power supply, especially one that was used mere minutes before being opened, I have to warn you, opening power supplies can be highly dangerous due to the high voltage filter capacitors within them. If you aren't fully confident in how to work around these devices and find yourself with so much as a single question in your mind about what is a threat and how to take care of it, don't try this until you figured out how to do it safely. Even then, you assume all risks associated with this work. With that necessary safety disclaimer out of the way, let's get to the repair at hand. I plan to remove the power supply's internals, then bang the dents out of the back of the unit with a hammer. I'll absolutely still be replacing this unit, even if I do deem it entirely safe, but I just want to be absolutely certain. I want to do this for the sake of seeing what I'll be able to do and to get a nicer condition, known good test power supply for future work on these systems. Like in many power supplies, the PCB is hard tethered to the AC socket with solder joint points at both the socket and the board, so I chose to desolder the leads from the back of the AC socket with the intention of soldering them back on later. Watching this footage back, I realized that I probably could have pulled the socket out and untangled the leads from the metal chassis by pulling them through this slot in the metal chassis, but I didn't see this at the time so bear with me here. Once the board was freed from the chassis, I pulled out my multimeter to test the voltage of the large filter capacitor on the board, which is the main hazard in one of these switch mode power supplies. Here you can see that it's reading 2 volts, indicating that there is no hazard with this board. Board. I examined the entire board in detail, though I certainly focused more on the end of the board that was closest to the bent back cover. Nothing seemed wrong or damaged, and I believe that whatever impact or force that caused the back of the power supply's case to bend like it did, didn't transfer much, if any, of its force into the PCB itself. After a while of fighting with the clips that hold the AC socket into place, I got it to come out of the case, which means that I'm free to take the hammer to it now. Alright, actually, not the hammer quite yet. Instead, I'll start with some pliers and my hands to see if I can work out any of the bends first. Some progress was made, but I definitely still need to use a hammer and a piece of scrap wood to pound some of these bends out. 
It's not perfect, but I don't think I'd ever be able to get it back to factory condition. I still think it's better than it was at the start, and the AC socket sits almost flush now, which is far better than before I tried to fix it. I put the board and fan in, then re-soldered the AC socket's connections and added some electrical tape for isolation, even though these contacts were originally left bare. With the top cover replaced, I think it's pretty obvious that my efforts to repair the case slightly weren't fruitless. It's far better than it originally was, and I'd call that a success. And once more, I'm still replacing the unit. The new one just hadn't come in at the time of filming. Now we're on to the back case, which is also in pretty rough shape. I'm honestly not entirely certain where to start, but I think that bending these PCIe slot covers back into shape can't be a terrible thing to do first. I was able to get both of these pieces nearly completely straight again after a little bit of bending with my hands and some slight tapping with the hammer. The rest of the case just needs a bit of tapping with the hammer, some bending with some pliers, and then a little bit of adjustment to the side panel locking mechanism, which actually made it actuate far smoother than it did otherwise. While I was considering reassembling the computer, I noticed that on the side panel there was this bend mark, which I decided to try and hammer out. I'm not sure how this went in the end, and it did remove the crease, but made the panel look like it's got some bumps or waves in it. I'm not sure if that was a success, you could let me know in the comments. Putting the system back together was nothing special, so I'll spare going into the details there. I tested the CMOS battery, which was perfectly good, and decided to see if the 8GB stick of RAM that came with the system would work with another slightly mismatched 8GB stick of DDR4 that I had on hand. I also went ahead and threw a one terabyte hard drive in the system, along with the original 256 gigabyte light on NVMe drive, and received a memory error code through the power button when powering it back on. Alright, so clearly the combination of RAM that I tried isn't working, so I'll go ahead and go back to what the system came with as that configuration worked and I'd rather not have only 8 gigabytes of memory in here. All that lies ahead is a new Windows install, because I'd much rather put an OS that is officially supported on this hardware on here than Windows 11, and then I can do whatever I please with this system. And here's just a little update from script writing me here, no footage for this part, but if anyone cares what became of this system, Windows actually would not activate no matter what I tried, so this computer has found its place as a personal Minecraft server running Ubuntu and with a new power supply, and it's been great so far. Well, that's all that I have for you today. Bit of a shorter video, but maybe still a bit interesting for some of you. In any case, I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.